Hello, I am Be Better Gamer. Welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated and focused on wrestling video games, my love for wrestling video games. Today, I am going to be playing Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, but I'm not just going to be playing Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. I'm going to be showing you a created wrestler of Sting, a call, if you will, of Sting. This is my call of Sting. Very easy to make, very simple to make because half the work is done for you. All his moves I pulled from WCW and WWE Revenge. Uh, I based his look on early 90s Sting, uh, obviously with the face paint. Based his look on his matches in Japan. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but first let me show you about the call. So one of the cool things about making Sting in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is they did something in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 you can't find in No Mercy or the other games where you can give them voices. So here, if you listen, you hear that? That's, that's Sting's woo that he does in WCW and W Revenge. It's here. You can use that voice. So there it is, an alternate B voice. Uh, alternate A is the voice they use when they do striking. And here are the uh, parameters and fighting style and all that stuff. Obviously, it's in Japanese. So if you look in the description below, you'll see a link to my full call. It's typed up nice and neat in a little Google Docs um, format. Google spreadsheet, I should say. And um, <clears throat> again, the moves are all pulled from Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. I still gave him the Scorpion Deathlock just because, you know, why not? It's a fun move to do. But another neat thing about Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 that didn't make it into WWF No Mercy is the front special where you can slam them down in like a sidewalk slam and then you can lock on, it'll automatically go into your ground submission and here you can put the Scorpion Deathlock as a basic ground submission. So that's cool. So here we go into the meat and potatoes of the call. It's ba you could just look at the numbers. You don't really need a translation for this. You can just look at the numbers, pause it, go up and down if you're playing this game. I chose this hairstyle. It's sort of like the shaved hair look because if you go to the regular short hair look, the lightest blonde doesn't really look like that bleached blonde style of hair that Sting had back in the day. You know, he had that very, you know, he looked he was like a muscled up surfer dude. Like, that was his gimmick, right? <laughs> and, um, cool thing is, they have his old school face paint, but they also have his, you know, his Sting face paint. I mean, they're all Sting, right? I guess, I guess it's the Sting that you're most familiar with. Surfer dude looking Sting or hiding up in the rafters, you know, crow looking Sting. So you can actually do that too if you want. I'm just showing you here. Again, I based my Sting on early Sting about of, of the, like, you know, the Wrestle Kingdom, not the Wrestle Kingdom, but the Tokyo Dome show matches and the other matches he had in Japan in the early 90s. And again, I'll talk about that in a bit. Body type three, skin tone one, tanned up surfer, muscular looking dude that he was. C29 basic tights. I gave him light blue because uh, he wore those light blue. He had this really cool blue um, color that uh, they unfortunately don't have. But in, actually in WCW NW Revenge, they have it. It's like an ice blue. Uh, and I would use that all the time to like change some of the wrestlers to that color because it was just one of my favorite colors. His boots, C4. Uh, just basically white. Just turn them white. Same boots I used for the, my Road Warriors call for Hawk and Animal if you want to check that out of my other Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 calls. And yeah, you know, white wrist pads and that's it. Second outfit, pretty much the same thing. Uh, just red boots now, red boots. So the only downside with these tights is that they don't have like the little scorpion symbol that he would have on the side. But you know, the face paint is his face paint, so that's good. And then tights, here we go, black and yellow. Again, they only have the one stinger face paint it would be really cool if they had the other Stinger face paints, but it still looks nice with the black and yellow. I don't mind it. You know, if you want to use slot three and four to make Crow era Sting, you know, late WCW Sting, go ahead by all means. But that's my Sting call. That's it. Very simple. Again, click the link on the description below and you can see everything typed out, what I chose for his parameters. And that's just what I chose. That doesn't mean you have to choose it. I'm just showing you what I did. You can make changes if you want. 
I mean, I also made changes from what I saw with his moves in WCW and the Revenge. I tweak things here and there, move some stuff around. Obviously, you add a little bit more moves because there's more moves to add in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 over WCW and the Revenge. Um, but yeah, if you want to change some stuff around, go, go ahead. This is just sort of like a base, a template I'm giving you sort of to inspire you because that's the beauty of these games of the Create a Wrestler mode. You can do whatever you want. You can change it however you want. Um, and as always, when I do my Create a Wrestler tutorials or videos, you can just go ahead and go make them right away. Or if you want to stick around and hear me blab a little bit for about Sting in Japan for the next... 10 minutes or so, <laughs> feel free because now I'm going to play a match with Sting with my new call against the Great Muta. And I chose the Great Muta because, again, Sting, he was big in Japan for a little bit in like the 90s. He was like a special attraction. And I chose Sting in virtual pro to make him Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 because I was inspired about what's going on with the upcoming Wrestle Kingdom 12 event that New Japan is putting on. So every year, if you're not familiar, with New Japan every year they have this big Tokyo Dome show on January 4th Tokyo Dome is the arena and actually that's actually the arena I chose for this I chose the ramp variant which you have to unlock um, in Royal Road Secession mode and in my let's plays I show that but every year it's like their Wrestlemania if you will that's the biggest you know example you can you can relate between the two and in the past few years, it's been getting more and more popular. I mean, New Japan right now, they are becoming as popular, almost, I would say, as they were in the um, in the 90s, you know, when they had Great Muto, when they had, you know, Keiji Muto and Masahiro Chono and Shinya Hajimoto, all those guys, Jushin Dunn Liger, you know, at his, you know, and not his prime, I mean, Jushin Dunn Liger was good for like 10 years, but um, in the early early earliest version of what is now known as Wrestle Kingdom it was just the January 4 Tokyo Dome show and the very first Tokyo Dome show took place in 1992 right yeah 1992 <laughs> I had to hesitate a little bit because I think the inspiration for the January Tokyo Dome show came from the previous year in March they had a super show at Tokyo Dome and it was WCW New Japan Super Show, right? So it was WCW wrestlers, New Japan wrestlers coming together for this big event in March of 1991. And I think that's what inspired them to keep going in the next few years. They would work with WCW, but then after that, New Japan would be completely on their own, but they would still be doing the January 4 Tokyo Dome Show. Uh, that very first show, before it was called, it was the annual Tokyo Dome show, the Super Show, WCW, Great Muda fought Sting in a really good match. If you have New Japan World, you can watch it. Uh, it was the second main event. It was the second main event. The, f the main event was headlined by Ric Flair and Tatsumi Fujinami. So these were kind of dream matches. These were dream matches, right? So if you look at what's going on today, you have Kenny Omega being challenged by Chris Jericho. It's going to be, I believe it's going to be the second main event of the Tokyo Dome show. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. That's what everyone's thinking. Everyone th is thinking, well, it's not going to go on last because you got Okada and Naito going on last. But maybe it's going to be the second to last show. So, uh, match of the show. So, that's why I wanted to do Sting because there was a promo Kenny Omega cut. He cut a promo um, saying, you know, to the Japanese press, that for the first time in God knows how long, we have a special guest from the big leagues coming to challenge New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that's what got me thinking, like, well, how long has it been? How long has it been for New Japan to have someone come over from the big leagues? Those were his choice of words, the big leagues. And I think every wrestling fan, even if you are a fan of Lucha Libre in Mexico, or if you're a fan of British Pro Wrestling or Japanese Pro Wrestling, or you only watch American wrestling, I think a lot of fans can agree that when you're talking about the big leagues in the world of pro wrestling, everyone t is mentioning WWE. And in the early 90s, or late 90s also, WCW, those were the big leagues because they were the biggest promotions, they were making the most money, they were had the most mainstream appeal all around the world. 
And I think it still is true to this day. WWE is still the big leagues. That's not like disrespecting any of the other promotions. There's a lot of great promotions going on right now. And you could even make a case that WWE isn't putting the best content out there right now. But it's still considered the big league. And that's why Kenny Omega said that. Because he wants to make Wrestle Kingdom... You know, he wants to make that match at Wrestle Kingdom with him and Chris Jericho a moment, a moment in wrestling history. And so I look, I looked it up and I was like, when were, you know, because I remember a few appearances in the past Wrestle Kingdoms. You had Brock Lesnar. He was there, but it was before, it was called Wrestle Kingdom. He fought, I believe it was in 2006. I think in 2006, he fought against um, Shinsuke Nakamura uh, for the IWGP Championship. Um, so that was kind of a big deal, but that was, you know, I would say Brock is bigger now than he was then, even though he was still Brock Lesnar, everyone knew who he was, but that was a big deal, that was a, that was a main event match, Brock Lesnar against Nakamura, Nakamura at the time was one of the top stars of, of New Japan, if not the top star at that time, um, so that was a big deal, I would say the second other biggest deal uh, would have been maybe in 2008, 2008 Wrestle Kingdom 2, the second Wrestle Kingdom to go by, you know, the second Tokyo Dome show to go by that name, Wrestle Kingdom, uh, that was also a cross promotion, it was New Japan and TNA Impact, and TNA Impact was doing pretty well at that time, so a lot of Impact guys were there, uh, Kurt Angle took on Yuji Nagata, uh, in the second to last match, for the third IWGP Championship. I'm not going to go too much details about what that means. The IWGP Championship at one point was split into two separate IWGP Championships at two points in its time. So at this time was the second one. It was called the third one. It's very complicated. Blame Minoki. <laughs> all you got to know is Kurt Angle and Yuji Nagata fought. And it was a pretty cool thing. And again, that's all, sort of another dream match. Because at that time, you know, Kurt Angle leaving WWE was a big deal. And for him to show up at Impact, I mean, he was still Kurt Angle. He was still having great matches, even though he was going through his problems. And Yuji Nagata had really started to, you know, not started to. He was already established at that point as a major star also. So that was a big deal. Um, you know, you look at the other years, the Dudleys have wrestled at Wrestle Kingdoms. Jeff Hardy was at the 2011 Wrestle Kingdom. He fought Naito for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. But, you know... Did you know that? I, you know, like I'm going deep. I'm going deep into the Wrestle Kingdom lore. I think a lot of fans that are just now discovering Wrestle Kingdom, you look back, there are a lot of names that you might be more familiar with from WWE, from Impact Wrestling, from the States. Uh, MVP and Shelton Benjamin were at uh, Wrestle Kingdom 2012. Um, and, and again, before Wrestle Kingdom, though, uh, it was just a January 4 Tokyo Dome show. Every year had a different name. And from 1992 to 1995, um, Sting was featured in every single one except for 1994. And he was part of that first Super Show. So when I heard Kenny Omega say, for the first time in God knows how long, we have a special guest from the big leagues coming to challenge New Japan Pro Wrestling, the first name that came to my mind was Sting. Honestly, like that's, that's to me because to me, even with Brock Lesnar main eventing that one time against Nakamura and even with Kurt Angle, uh, Sting was with WCW and for WCW to be working and partnering with New Japan, that was really the last time you had one of the big leagues working with New Japan directly. Now, WWE is not really working directly with New Japan per se, but a lot of people, myself included, are kind of are always going to see Jericho as a WWE guy. Even though, you know, he had his time in WCW, his brief time in ECW, and he wrestled a lot in Mexico and Japan, Jericho, to me, is a WWE guy. And he just came off a great run in WWE with The List, and his feud with Owens, his match with Styles at WrestleMania, a bunch of cool stuff. Um, him taking all those thumbtacks in that match with Dean Ambrose. Um, it was an incredible run for Chris Jericho and then for him you think okay he's gonna follow it up he's gonna go tour with Fozzy for a bit maybe do his podcasting stuff and then he'll be back right I don't think anyone was expecting him to show up and challenge Kenny Omega who 
is the hotness right now in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm a huge fan of Kenny Omega. And we're all just sitting around waiting. Oh, when's Okada Omega 4 going to happen? Is it going to happen this year? Is it going to happen next year? But here we get this dream match. And it really is a dream match. And, you know, to sort of celebrate that, I figured I'd make Sting. So that's my convoluted explanation for it. I think deeply about these things. <laughs> I don't just think, oh, yeah, you know, Sting. They have his face paint. They have his moveset. Yeah, I guess I'll make them. I mean, you could take that logic and supply it to anyone that were in these Aki games and mix and match. And it is cool to do that, and I love it. But, you know, I'm kind of weird where I think really deeply into these things. It's like, oh, no, let me see if I can make a connection between what's going on now and what's going on back then. Because if you watch my Let's Plays, you know I love talking about the historical context. And I think we could learn a lot about history uh, not just in wrestling, but in life in general. And, you know, learning from the past, seeing what worked then, would it work now. Uh, I think you look at something like Muda versus Sting. That was a big deal back then. And you might not be familiar with it unless you were familiar with watching the great Muda wrestle in WCW. I mean, even at one time he was NWA champion. But imagine if, like, the internet was around back then, the way it is now in social media. You know it would be hyped up all around the world. You know, let's you know people buying their New Japan World subscriptions to watch the Great Muda and Sting. I mean, you also had the Steiners; they were a big deal showing up in Japan and wrestling. Um, you know, Sting when he fought, he fought Great Muda the first year, and then at the very first uh, Tokyo Dome show on January fourth, it was Sting and Muda against the Steiners. You also had Lex Luger facing Masahiro Chono for the WCW Championship. I mean, that's crazy. Like that. I mean, you look at today's standards. Imagine, I mean, Ring of Honor, they work with New Japan and they defend their championships over there. But again, big leagues, that's Kenny Omega's words. You know, big leagues, WWE, that's who he's talking about. Imagine if a WWE champion were to defend his title over in New Japan. That hasn't happened since you know the very the very few first Tokyo Dome shows uh, in 1993 Sting fought Hiroshi Hase that was a really good match really cool match uh, in 1994 Sting wasn't on the card uh, it was no longer called the Super Show by that point it was 1994 Battlefield at the Tokyo Dome show Hulk Hogan was on that card now that's another example I would say of someone who you know Hulk Hogan then was even more so in sort of the position Jericho is now, except Jericho can't go from WWE to WCW, and that's exactly what was going on in 94. Hulk Hogan appeared at the Tokyo Dome show. He fought Tatsumi Fujinami because this was right when he was transitioning from WWF to WCW. Like, how cool is that? So you get to see this match happens one time, one night only. Hulk Hogan, this big WWF star, faces Tatsumi Fujinami and then gone boom he goes to WCW and then you know obviously the rest is history with that so that's another good example something similar to what's going on right now with Kenny Omega and Jericho in 1995 you had Sting come back and he was involved in this weird four-man tournament uh, called the Final Countdown BVD tournament that took place at the Tokyo Dome show but basically it was to get Sting and Anoki in the finals and you had Sting versus Antonio Noki. Noki was way past his prime at that point, but you know, it still was a cool thing to see. Uh, you, you know, you talk about dream matches, Sting's name, you know, was coming up a few years ago when he came back to WWE. Well, not came back to WWE, but showed up in WWE for the first time. And he, everyone was like, dream match, Sting Undertaker, dream match, Sting and Cena. And unfortunately, his career was cut short uh, in WWE because of injury, but you know, we got Sting Triple H at Mania, and then we got Sting and Rollins. Like, I think that's so cool. I think it's amazing that we live in a day and age where something like this is happening now. So it's always cool to look back to see sort of like the seeds that were planted. You know, the, the concept of a dream match isn't new, it's been around ever since wrestling's been around. You've always wanted to see, you know, who from what promotion will face who, and Right now, the biggest dream match has come from WWE wrestlers facing wrestlers outside of WWE because there's so much more eyes on the product that's outside of WWE, um, on the people that are in Ring of Honor. They're in, um, you know, in AAA and CMLL and Progress and Evolve and, you know, New Japan and NOAA and all these places. So I'm, I'm super excited. I'm super pumped. 
Uh, kind of want Jericho to win, not gonna lie. But I'll get more into that later. But this was just the first, this call video of me uh, making Sting and talking about this. It's just the first taste of a lot of the content I got coming up uh, for my channel with the Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 videos. I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking about Wrestle Kingdom and coming up and the next few calls I have are gonna be sort of loosely tied again to the history of Wrestle Kingdom and so I decided to start with Sting as the first one because you know his history is a little bit shorter than a lot of the other guys I have planned uh, but he's also probably the easiest guy to make in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 because again they have his face paint you got his moves you know everything's in here that you need to make Sting so why not make Sting go ahead and make Sting like I did this match is going on way longer than I anticipated when I was recording it. Uh, full disclosure, I had to do it several times over because I thought something was wrong. I thought I maybe had the wrong settings on. Great Muda would not tap out. I keep throwing him the Scorpion Deathlock. Uh, you know, he just doesn't tap out. But, you know, I'll get there eventually. Now he's making the comeback. Now he's got his special, now I'm worried. It's like, am I gonna have to record this all over again? I'm not backing down though, I'm not afraid of Muda. Uh, oh, another thing I forgot to mention with Sting. So I chose the Tokyo Dome ramp because there's another infamous match that Sting had in Japan with Rick Root, uh, where they fought for the WCW International title um, at Wrestling Dontaku on May 1994. And it's infamous because uh, it, it was the ramp on the Tokyo Dome, which was always really neat to see. And the match started out early, they were out fighting on the ramp, and then they went to the outside floor. And the way the ring used to be set up back then on the outside floor, they used to have this like, step off, I guess you would say, from one part of the floor to the other. And Rick Rude took a dive from Sting, Sting dived to him to the outside, and he landed on his back, like right on the middle of the edge of that, and he, injured his back during that match right in the opening minutes and it would be a career ending injury it was such a bad i think maybe he broke it or severely injured it during that match but he kept he kept on in the match and if you watch that match it's not a short match it's a pretty long match i think they go about like 12 15 minutes and he's fighting it with this injured back and you can't tell you can't tell like when he first got hit you could see like oh man he's down for a little bit he's not moving but then he gets up, he powers through it, he takes like a suplex onto the ramp after that. Like it's crazy. Rick Rude, Rick Rude's amazing. That's another guy I gotta make in this game because he's got a small history with Japan and a lot of important stuff happened with Rick Rude there. And then I could do Rick, Rick Rude and Sting and maybe talk about that match and Rick Rude's legacy. But there you go. Finally got great mood at the tap. So I hope, uh, if you're still here, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the Sting creation. Shoot me a picture on Twitter if you if you make it or if you've made any changes to it. Let me know in the comments below. I always love it when people make changes. It's really cool to see what they get inspired to do. But yeah, there's Sting, the Stinger, master of the Scorpion Deathlock, putting it on Great Muda. Very excited about the upcoming Dream Match Sting. You know, there's still a bunch of dream matches I wish Sting could be a part of. But unfortunately, you know, at least we're getting Jericho and Omega. So, thank you for watching. Once again, I am Be Better Gamer. And until next time, as always, keep watching all the wrestling.